Praise God. Thank you all for joining our service today. And we also welcome everyone who is viewing us online today. Let's begin the service with a word of prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for each person that is gathered in your midst and in your presence, Father God. Lord Jesus, we thank you for bringing us into your presence, Lord. Father God, we commit the entire service into your loving hands, Lord. We commit the worship team. We commit the message, the word. And we commit every single person and that family members seated here today, Lord. Lord Jesus, may they not go back empty-handed, Father God, but may they go filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord. May they go back home filled with your word, Lord, and may the word see them through this week, this month, and the days ahead of us, Father God. We commit the entire service into your loving hands, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. I request Brother Thiru and Brother David to lead us in a time of worship. Praise God, everyone. Once again, I'm so happy and thrilled to be here in the house of the Lord. Before we could start our worship, the Bible says in Psalms 1, 40 verse 2, it says, He brought me up out of the pit of destruction, out of the merry clay, and he has set my feet upon the rock, making my footstep firm. Gonna hear, we are here to bless the name of the Lord. Yes, Lord, 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 y
People celebrate the death of Christ, but He is alive today. We celebrate that Jesus is alive in us, to us. Amen. Sir. Shepherd of my soul, you are a good shepherd. Yes, Jesus. Shepherd of my soul, my King for control, wherever you may be, I will fall. And I made a song to listen to your voice, wherever you may be, I will fall. Oh, shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Wherever you take me, I will fall. And I made a choice to listen to your voice. Wherever you take me, I will Be in a quiet past. Even though when we 
see the mountain so huge, you know. Yes, yes, yes. We know that you will guide us. Yes, Jesus. The shepherd is always there with us. Yes, yes. Guide us, lead us, to protect us. Yes, Lord. No matter what we go through in our lives, Lord Jesus, we know there is a shepherd yes, who is always good, who is always right. Yes, Lord. We commit all our situations into your, into your hands, Lord. Oh, Jesus. This time we pray, we ask for your grace and mercy upon us. Maybe the sickness, it might be a big mountain. Lord, you are our healer. And you're the one who heals us. You're much more than the doctor. You're much stronger. You're much stronger than the medicine. Yes, Lord Jesus. So one word of yours might change life. Yes, Hallelujah, Lord. Save you like a shepherd, lead us. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. But we need thy tender care. In thy blessed pastures, lead us. Let's sing it again. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us, but we need thy tender care. In thy blessed mountains, lead us, for our youth are forced to bear. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou art God as thy Jesus, 
You are worthy of all our praises. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast loved us, loved us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast loved us, loved us. Thank you. 
ஒரு குயவன் தன் களிமண்ணை உருவாக்குவது போல எங்களை உருவாக்கி கொண்டு இருக்கிற மக்கள் நன்றி சாச்சா இந்த நாட்களில உமக்காக நாங்கள் எழுப்பி பிரகாசிக்க கிருபம் செல்கிறார் எங்களை தைரியப்படுத்தி உற்சாகப்படுத்துவீராக எங்களை கரம் பிடித்து நடத்து வீராகட்டும் எங்களுக்கு எத்தனை போராட்டங்கள் நிந்த அவமானங்கள் சோதனைகள் வந்தாலும் ஆச்சா உண்மை விட்டு தளர்ந்து போக்கூடாத ராஜா உண்மை விட்டு விலகி போக்கூடாத ராஜா எங்களை நீர் தான் பலப்படுத்த வேண்டும் அப்பா நீங்கள் எங்களை அபிஷேகத்தை வல்லமையாக நடத்தும் அப்பா ஒவ்வொரு நாளும் எங்களை பலப்படுத்துவீராக ஆலோசனை கர்த்தராய் இருந்த எங்களுக்கு ஆலோசனை தருவீராக நாங்கள் என்ன செய்ய வேண்டும் என்ன செய்யக்கூடாது என்று நீர் எங்களுக்கு தெளிவாக உணர்த்தி நடத்துவீராக அப்பா இந்த நாட்களில அப்பா எத்தனையோ பேர்கள் அப்பா எத்தனையோ சோதனைகள் மத்தியிலே வாழ்ந்து கொண்டு இருக்கிறார்கள் பிரச்சனை போராட்டத்தின் மத்தியிலே வாழ்ந்து கொண்டு இருக்கிறார்கள் அப்பா கஷ்டத்தின் மத்தியிலே மனக்கவலையின் மத்தியிலே வாழ்ந்து கொண்டு இருக்கிறார்கள் இவர்களை எல்லாம் நீர் தான் பலப்படுத்தி ஆறுதல் படுத்த வேண்டும் உலகம் கொடுக்காத சமாதானத்தை நீர் கொடுப்பீராக அப்பா நீர் கொடுப்பீராக நாங்கள் விசுவாசிக்கிறோம் ராஜா இந்த நேரத்தில் அப்பா அவருடைய தாசனை கொண்டு எங்களிடத்தில் பேசுவீராக அப்பா இந்த ஆன்லைனில் யூ பண்ணிக்கிற ஒவ்வொருத்தரையும் நீர் பிளஸ் பண்ணுவீராக ஆசீர்வதிப்பீராக அவர்களை எதிர்பார்த்து கொண்டிருக்கிற வார்த்தைகளை நீர் பேசுவீராக ராஜா அவர்களோடு நீர் ஈடுபடுவீராக பலப்படுத்துங்க அப்பா இந்த நாளை நீர் ஆசீர்வதித்து தருவீராக முற்றிலும் அவருடைய கரத்தில் ஒப்பு கொடுத்து துதி கன மகிமை எல்லாம் செலுத்தேன் மீட்பரேசு நாமத்தில் கேட்டு சீனுள்ள நல்ல தகவல் Thank you, Brother David and Brother Thiru for that beautiful Tamil song and those very meaningful songs. Today, two songs on the shepherd and how he guides us. And the Bible says that Jesus is not only a good shepherd, but he is a shepherd among shepherds. And the Bible also calls him the chief shepherd. And it's so interesting that even today, as they've chosen these beautiful songs, we are getting into our message and we've been studying the beatitudes and even as those songs talk about the shepherd i was just reading a little bit about the mount and a plateau that jesus went on and gave the sermon on the mount just imagine jesus after being baptized by john in the river jordan fully under the inspiration under the power of the holy spirit after 30 years of studying the word learning the word inquiring about god's word he goes to this mount and he speaks his first his very first sermon the beatitudes and it's so interesting as you look at what jesus covers in the beatitudes first he importantly covers about a man's heart he covers about how a man should be remorseful a man should guard his heart a man should guard his ways then he speaks a lot about managing relationships not only managing our relationship with god but jesus touches a lot upon managing relationship with others and he continues talking about that then he steps in to guarding your heart and guarding your thoughts and then once again today he touches again on relationships and how we deal when there are conflict in relationships how do we deal when we are doing the right thing but somebody else is not reciprocating in the same way somebody else is not uh, dealing with us in the same way we are dealing with them what do we do in those times let me begin by reading this chapter verses 33 to 48 verses 33 to 37 says again you have heard that it was said to those of old you shall not swear falsely but shall perform your oaths to the lord but i say to you do not swear at all neither by heaven for it is god's throne nor by the earth for it is his footstool nor by jerusalem for it is the city of the great king nor shall you swear by your head because you cannot make one hair white or black but let your yes be yes and your no be no 
for whatever is more than this is from the evil one. So you, today we are coming to the last portion of the Beatitudes and the Beatitudes talk about from verses 33 to 48. It's divided into three sections. On the next slide you'll see that it's divided into three sections. Verse 37 to 33 to 37 talks about swearing. When people say I swear by heaven, I swear by earth or I swear by I swear by my parents, I swear by my children, or I swear by this name, that name. That's what it's talking about. What is Jesus telling us in this scenario and why is he telling us not to swear? What is the original meaning? What is Jesus thinking when he is telling this? Secondly, we are going to look at what Jesus means by going the extra mile. If somebody sues you for a cloak, give them your tunic also. Thirdly, we are going to understand what does it mean to love our enemies. But at the beginning itself, I would like to say that this is not going to be easy. It involves a lot of us renewing our mind, casting down imaginations. It requires us to come down from our pride, come down from our high horse. It involves us to humble ourselves and allow the Holy Spirit to help us through His word. Another reference to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5 is what James says in James 5 verse 12. But above all, my brethren, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath, but let your yes be yes and no, no, lest you fall into judgment. Once again, James reflects the same words that Jesus is speaking on the sermon on the mount and just imagine that these are the words of our Lord Jesus. He didn't talk about anything else but his very first sermon he addresses relationships. He addresses how we deal with others. He addresses our thoughts, our actions and most importantly he addresses what is in our heart and how we deal with that. So James says, so here when you look at it, it's not talking about the focus is not oaths. The focus is not about making promises or false promises but actually the focus here is completely about speaking the truth and as believers Jesus expects you and me to speak the truth. I want to give you another reference so that we understand why Jesus is speaking so much on not making oaths and Jerusalem is a king's place, the earth is his footstool. So why is Jesus telling them not to swear by anything else? To the Israelite or to the Jew or a Pharisee, they knew that in Exodus 27 it says, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. So what they would do, they would say, Okay, we don't have to take the name of the Lord in vain. But they would begin to swear under the heaven, on the earth, on other things they began to swear. So that's why Jesus is telling them specifically don't do these things and then he tells them to just let your yes be yes and your no be no so that when the other people see you they should not say okay here's a man he says he'll do this he says he'll do that but then he never sticks to his commitments he says he promised us to do then how will they respect you when you tell them about Jesus about his healing power, about his healing capacity, about his ability to save. So that's why it says, yes be yes and no be no. But an oath is also important. That's why if you look at our Indian law or when this was introduced, I was reading about our Indian law system and the penal code and our judicial system right in 1973, they, make, they started making people who come and stand on the pew to take an oath. And the oath is, that I swear by the Almighty God. So they swear by the God that they believe and that oath was because I am sure in the past people would have stood in those pews, given false witness, would have falsely accused people, would have told in the court publicly outright lies. So the oath is not wrong but here in this con context Jesus wants us to tell the truth and that's why he says don't swear by anything. You don't need to give false witness. Don't do any of those things. But let your yes be yes and your no be no. So that when people speak about you or anyone else, you know, okay, 
this is a man of his word this is a woman of his word and don't swear by the heaven or the earth that's the first thing that jesus addresses here and even jesus one of the greatest examples 50 times in the book of matthew he says truly i tell you or in the king james version it says 50 times in the book of matthew alone it says verily verily i tell you so jesus himself spoke the truth and nothing but the truth the bible says jesus is the truth the way and the life so you and i must remember to be imitators of our lord jesus so today we know we might think okay it's okay to say just for the namesake we say this lie for namesake we say that lie but today we know from god's word from the sermon on the mount that you and i as believers we are meant to stick to the truth as we continue the second section talks about going the extra mile what does it mean to go the extra mile let me let me read this verses for you verse 38 to 42 you have heard that it was said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth but i tell you not to resist an evil person but whoever slaps you on your right cheek turn the other to him also if anyone wants you wants to sue you and take away your tunic let them have your cloak also and whoever compels you to go one mile go with him too give to him who asks you and from him who wants to borrow from you you do not turn away so it says here an eye for an eye in those days the jews would relate the Pharisees would relate to this an eye for an eye, meaning that if somebody gouges out your eye, you gouge out their eye. A tooth, if somebody breaks your tooth, you break their tooth. But why is God telling them these specific things? Because one thing about the Pharisees, any excuse, we see it in an instance where there was a lady caught in the act of adultery and they immediately picked up stones and wanted to stone her to death. But when Jesus wrote on the ground he probably revealed all of their names so the religious pharisees one thing about them is they themselves would commit the sin that they are accusing others but when they find somebody they will act like they are the most holy the most religious people and they will give a punishment that is more severe so that is why jesus is just telling like a balance for example you take a weighing scale today we don't have the weighing scale we have all these digital machines where you just put it gives you grams milligrams but a weighing scale if you put one kilo of weight in it it will give you for example you want to buy one kilo of oranges one kilo of weight will only show you one kilo of oranges. it will not show you it will not give you two kilos of oranges like that so jesus was saying if somebody is robbed you give him the penalty of a robber don't treat him like a murderer and don't punish him like a murderer when you understand these things you know what jesus is trying to say so he's telling if he's a murderer give him what is equal an eye for an eye a tooth for a tooth because the pharisees they would overdo those things but having said that he's saying keep it limited to what they do let it rest let the punishment exactly reciprocate to what they have done then he goes further by saying but i tell you not to resist the person but whoever slaps you on your right cheek turn to him also if anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic let him have your cloak also so here jesus is telling though don't keep the punishment very great keep it limited to the crime but then don't stop there if somebody does evil to you don't reply to him with evil don't do the same evil that he has done to you but instead treat him in a different way it says how do you treat him if he is suing you for a cloak give him your tunic as well if he is accusing you of certain things let it go don't accuse him many a time when people treat us badly when people come against us especially when you are doing good and being gracious and kind to them what do you do jesus says here don't reply to them with the evil they have done to you don't go let's come back to them let's get back to them let's call somebody to arbitrate they have done this we want justice 
we want to settle it right now don't do those things but in fact go that extra mile if somebody in your office knowing that this is the worst task to give you they give it to you go that extra mile and even complete that or do even more than they have asked you that is what jesus is telling but the greatest example for un to understand an eye for an eye tooth for a tooth and how we are to respond let's look at the example of jesus first peter 2 verse 23 says who when he was reviled did not revile in return when he suffered he did not threaten but committed himself to him who judges righteously so here we look at how jesus responds jesus was reviled but he did not revile again he was threatened he was abused he was beaten but look at jesus response he does not do anything or any of those things to his enemy so you and i we know that we are ambassadors of christ we are meant to follow in the footsteps of our lord jesus and today while we are studying these things the holy spirit is opening our eyes that god expects exactly all this from each of us and he will empower us and strengthen us and look at the last words that jesus spoke before he died he says father forgive them for they know not what they have done so you and i if somebody does something evil to us something bad to us we'll tell other people about that throughout our life we may not be able to forget the hurts and the pains they have done and jesus he was beaten he was bruised there were thorns on his brow he was tortured extremely but to those exact people he said he prayed for them he says father forgive them for the sins they had done and this verse in peter the same verse that we read it says when he was reviled he did not revile in return when he suffered he did not threaten but committed himself to him who judges righteously so jesus obviously knew that there is a righteous judge the father is there you and i don't have that place to judge a person for the wrongs that they have done but jesus left it knowing that the father at an appointed time everyone has to give account of the words that we have spoken we have to give account for the deeds that we have done so god will take care of those people that's why the bible says vengeance is mine or vengeance belongs to me so vengeance belongs to god and let us not take any action into our hands and that's what we see from the example of jesus firstly jesus is telling us in the last portion of the beatitudes let your yes be yes your no be no nothing else no adding anything no false truth or no half lies half truth nothing of that let your yes be yes and your no be no and when you take a decision to do that the holy spirit will help you and when you are studying the word and renewing your, your mind more and more is the holy spirit is obligated only to fulfill god's word and every time you study and you renew your mind towards god's word you are getting a strength in your heart in your inner man to live the way god wants you yes be yes no be no then he says don't give an eye for an eye don't take a tooth for a tooth but go that extra mile and do good even to those who are persecuting you the last portion of the teaching today is from verse 43 to 48 you have heard that it was said you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy but i say to you love your enemies bless those who curse you do good to those who hate you and for pray for those who spitefully use and persecute you that you may be sons of your father in heaven for he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust for if you love those who love you what reward have you do not even the tax collectors do the same and if you greet your brethren only what do you do more than others do not even the tax collectors do so therefore you shall be perfect <coughs> just as your father is perfect now jesus says that if you want to really be sons of god 
what are you supposed to do you are supposed to love those who hate you you are supposed to love those who persecute you and you are supposed to love your enemies there's no doubt about that in leviticus 19 verse 18 a same situation that occurred in the old testament times let's see what leviticus 19 so here matthew in the new testament records what jesus says and jesus says love your enemies it's no point loving those who love you but love those who hate you that's where you need the strength and the help of the holy spirit naturally it says even the tax collectors those who do wrong they also if you are kind to them they'll be kind to you but there requires no effort no strength to do that. but to love somebody who's hurt you who's mistreated you who's abused you that is where you need the strength of the holy spirit look at leviticus in leviticus 1918 it says you shall not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the children of your people but you shall love your neighbor as yourself i am the lord so literally even in leviticus it records and says that your neighbors or your colleagues those who may hurt you it says don't even do wrong to them don't do wrong to their children and don't bear any grudge or don't have any hatred towards them so you may be familiar with the situation or you may remember neighbors who have hurt you colleagues who have mistreated you or family members who have spoken wrong about you but in this situation it says your neighbors the society that you live in don't do wrong to them don't even do wrong to their children but be loving and kind even to them but of course like a disclaimer if somebody has cheated you somebody has hurt you you don't have to open yourself you can be guarded with them you don't have to give them chances to betray you to hurt you to do things cheat you again but according to these verses god says love them be good to them be kind to them be gracious to them if you can do good to them with god's strength even do that good to them but we can always be on guard and protect ourselves it would be foolish somebody has robbed you in the past to go trust them with money again that's not what these verses are saying but those same people you can bless pray and their judgment god is the righteous judge and he knows what to do and will take care finally a passage from the psalms and let's look at king david and what he says and we'll close psalm 139 21 to 22 says do i not hate them o lord who hate you and do i not loathe those who rise up against you i hate them with perfect hatred i count them my enemy so this was a passage that is often quoted by the jews and the pharisees they would quote this passage see even king david hated the enemies of god he wanted to do he wanted to destroy the enemies of god he hated the enemies of god but then the only one who can have a godly anger a righteous hatred is our lord jesus christ you and i don't have that capacity to judge people you and i don't have that ability to judge like how god is god is the only one who has a righteous indignation a righteous anger and an anger without any sin or guilt or remorse only god is able to do that so as david quotes these verses many of the jews and pharisees they stop with this that gives them permission to be angry with the enemies of god gives them permission to go against the enemies of god but then many don't read the other two verses that david writes and david when he's writing 21 and 22 he's writing on god's behalf he's not talking about personal enmity that he had with any nation or personal vengeance that he had with anyone else but he's writing on god's behalf on god's view he's writing what god tells him to write but then the next verses is seldom quoted or seldom spoken about it says verse 22 23 to 24 it says search me o god and know my heart try me and know my anxieties and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting so king david himself though he says these strong words these harsh words at the end of it he says god look and see if there's any fear in my heart 
if there's anything that I'm worried about or then he says search me and see if there's any wicked way that's why you and I as children of God as we are studying the Beatitudes we must often ask God to check our hearts and see to see if we have any anger towards anyone any hatred towards anyone any bitterness that we have not dealt with towards anyone we must search our hearts and then he says and this and lead me in the way everlasting meaning help my heart to be set apart for you because he knew that he had everlasting life with our Lord Jesus. You and I must remember always that our life doesn't end here. Our life goes all the way into eternity and these small things that we are taking note of today is very very important and you and I must guard our hearts with all diligence. The last verse and we'll close. Ephesians 4 1 says I therefore a prisoner of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy of your calling with which you were called. So Paul finally in conclusion he writes to the Ephesian church I therefore a prisoner of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy of your calling with which you were called. So you and I know that we are ambassadors of Christ. Whenever we go to our offices, our colleges, our places of work, when we interact with people in our neighborhood, we have to remember that we are representatives of Christ. We are ambassadors of Christ. We don't act in a natural way. We don't respond to them in natural ways. We are not supposed to. Jesus very clearly teaches us today in the conclusion of the Beatitudes. He says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. So when people see you, they say, okay, a truthful man, a believer, one who follows the Lord Jesus. Then it says, others, when a person does something wrong to them, they'll immediately retaliate. Exactly what he did that to me, we should get back to him. He did that to me, we should sue him, we should take him to the court. But Jesus is saying, don't react like the world. I want you to react in such a way, even to that person who does bad, do good to him. Then finally, Jesus says, your enemies, those who outright come against you, who have taken you to court, who have spoken wrong things about you, who have blasphemed your name, maybe and spoken all sorts of wrong things. What does God want you to do towards them? He says, love them, pray for them, if you can, bless them. And that is what Jesus is teaching today. The first sermon on the mount, he teaches us, Managing our relationship with God, loving God above everything. Then managing our relationships with others, guarding our heart with all diligence, being careful about what we see, what we think, what we hear. Just give you a last example and we'll pray and close. Sometimes for those of you who have gone maybe to Uti or any other hill station, you know that as you go up, there are hairpin bends and for you to get on the top of the mountain, it's not going to be easy. You have to keep pressing the accelerator, changing the gears. Sometimes vehicle will come fast. You'll have to break the... So there are literally hurdles that you have to overcome. And that accelerator is like what we are doing today. That accelerator is us taking that first step, us taking that initiative to renew our minds to God's word. And understanding what God tells us. But then the vehicle is like the Holy Spirit. Every time you press the accelerator, every time you study God's word, every time you renew and meditate on God's word, what's happening? The Holy Spirit is taking you higher and higher and higher. And once you get to that mountain, even in the mountain you'll see challenges. But then those challenges are just like when you look down, you'll see all people so small, houses so small and so minute. Your challenges will become like that. That's why today you and I from the Beatitudes, the Word of God and the Holy Spirit, as you study God's Word, you know how you are to act. And the Holy Spirit, every time you study God's Word, so I encourage you, even as you go back home today, just read Matthew chapter 5, the Beatitudes and the Holy Spirit will empower you to live a godly life. So let's just close with a word of prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you, Father God, for speaking us today, Lord, about how, Lord Jesus, you want 
us to guard our hearts, guard our words, Lord. Strengthen us, precious Holy Spirit. Let our yes be yes. We know, Lord, like many of us have not done that till today, Lord. Many of us have not been conscious of these facts. But today, from your word, you have given us that conscience that we have to speak the truth in love, Lord. We have our yes should be yes, our no should be no. We should not fear man, Lord. Today, let it be a turning point for each of us. Even if we have not lived according to your word, Lord. Today we believe that the Holy Spirit will carve these things in our heart. That the Holy Spirit will empower us to walk the way you want us to, Lord. The Holy Spirit will empower us to speak the truth, Lord. To be loving to our enemies, Lord. To be kind to our enemies. To bless and pray for our enemies. Father God, we know and we surrender trying ourselves, Lord. But we trust the Holy Spirit to strengthen us to live the way you want us to, Father God. Once again, we thank you for every person seated here, Lord. They have come here with needs in their hearts. They have come here with challenges that they may have gone through the week. Oh, they have come here with, with things they are dealing with, Lord. Addictions that they may be dealing with, Lord. Temptations that they may be facing, Father God. Whatever it is, Lord, we believe that every prayer request of theirs will be answered today. In Jesus' name, Father God. In Jesus' name, Father God. Every bondage, every form of depression, oppression, whatever is troubling them, Lord, known and unknown, Lord, may all of them cease today under the power of your name, Lord, and everything cease in Jesus' name, Father God. Lord, I am reminded of those who are worried about their parents or thinking about their parents, Father God. Lord, Jesus, nobody can take care of them like you do, Father God, for everyone who is worrying about their parents, Father God. We just pray that the Holy Spirit will visit them even now, touch them, heal them, and deliver them completely, Father God. In Jesus' name, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that your word says you have plans to prosper us and give us a hope and a future. We thank you, Lord that finances will follow your children, Lord. We don't have to chase it, but it will chase us down, Lord. Victory is going to follow some here today and those who are watching online, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for blessing on the work of our hands, blessing on our finances and giving us victory in whatever we are believing you for, Lord. We give you all the glory today, Father God. Lastly, we remember... The tithe and the offering for those who have contributed online and those who are contributing today, Lord. Your word says that you love a cheerful giver. Let a man give as he is purposed in his heart, not grudgingly, but cheerfully, Father God. Lord, everyone who has contributed into the ministry, Father God, may they be blessed financially, Lord. May they have all sufficient to take care of their families really well and for every good work, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father and the sweet abiding presence of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each and every one of us both now and forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you everyone for, for attending our service today. Thank you everyone online. Wish you a very blessed week and God bless you. Thank you.